In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a more complicated dog bowl for our pet project uh, that actually uses on shape to create a bowl that kind of looks like a paw print like this picture I have here. Now, there are a couple different tools we can use uh, that's going to help us out, one of which is going to be the mirror tool because essentially this is a symmetric object. So what's on the left is identical to the right. So instead of having to draw this entire shape uh, from the ground up, we're actually going to be able to use the mirror tool to help us out. We're also going to use the offset tool and the trim tool, and you're going to see how these basic tools allow us to create this style dog bowl pretty quickly in on shape. So we're going to start by making a sketch on the top work plane. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line of symmetry. So I'm going to grab my line tool. And in on shape, if you want to create a line that isn't actually part of the design, so it's just there to maybe help you divide your design, you can use what's called the construction tool. So I already clicked on the line tool, and now I'm going to click on this construction button right here, which is also Q. And I'm going to click on my origin and just draw a perfectly vertical line. You can see how that's a dotted line. If I hit escape, it deselects both the line tool and the construction tool. So this line is not part of our design. It's only there to help us divide our design and use the mirror tool as I previously stated. Now this paw print looks uh, a lot like um, many ellipses. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, which is right here underneath the circle tool. And I'm going to start with the bottom part of the paw print. And I'm just going to start by drawing kind of a, an angled ellipse here something like so. When you use the ellipse tool, you actually have to click twice. So the first click is your horizontal scale, and then the second click is your vertical scale. And now I'm going to actually mirror this symmetrically using my uh, symmetry line here and the mirror tool. So I'm going to click on this mirror tool right here. The first thing we have to do is collect, click on our dividing line. And then I'm going to click on the shape I want to mirror, and that just mirrored my ellipse. Now I'm going to use the arc tool right here, which is A on your keyboard. And I'm just going to kind of round out where these meet a little bit by clicking on my edges and drawing a soft arc to actually kind of make the bottom of my paw print like we saw in that photo. Now I'm going to grab the trim tool, which is this pair of scissors right here. And I'm going to click on all the lines, the overlapping lines that I don't actually need. So I just have this one kind of paw print style shape. Next, we're going to work on the upper part of the paw. So again, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. Uh, from that image, it looked like it had two larger paw prints here, two little larger pads in the center. So I'm just going to draw a big pad right here. Again, I'm going to use the mirror tool by clicking on the mirror icon, clicking on my center line, and then clicking on that paw. And then I'm going to draw off to the side a smaller pad, something like that. And again, lastly, using the mirror line and mirroring that across the side. And obviously you can play with scale and measurements to make the paw look like you want. Now, technically these are the cutouts. This is the cubby. This is where you'd actually fill the bowl, but we need to do an outer perimeter that's going to be the surrounding base of this. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the offset tool right here. And we're going to have to offset each shape individually. So I'm going to click on this first paw pad. And if I click, I can actually offset by 0.75, which, you know, you can change. This is essentially choosing the wall thickness here. If you want to go a thinner wall, you could do something more like 0.5. You really just want to make sure that you're offsetting the same amount all the way around. So I'm going to click on each of these individual shapes and offset by half an inch or 0.5. And what you want to see is you want your offsets to overlap. So that way you have a connecting shape. Now, because we drew this bottom shape in multiple parts, you're actually going to have to click on it multiple times to make sure that you offset all the way around. And now this is looking a little bit messy, but we're going to use our trim tool to clean this up. So using the trim tool, I'm just going to delete all the overlapping lines from my offset. Oops, I accidentally just deleted a mention. So if you delete something you didn't mean to delete, remember that undo is your friend. All 
I'm not sure why my ellipse is changing its size here. I'm going to drop in a couple measurements. That way I can keep going around and try to delete. As you're deleting, uh, you might get some red that appears. That's okay. Just keep deleting here. Those are your constraints popping up showing that you might be deleting part of a constraint, but once you finish deleting all the overlapping lines, you should have a much cleaner image as you're going here. So let's see, working my way around. Again, don't get too concerned with measurements and dimensions that are changing right now. It's just because we're deleting lines that were constrained. So looking at that, and I'm actually going to clear out these measurements here just so we get a better view. We can see that we have our cutouts and the outer bowl. Uh, I'm going to label this to be base of bowl. And we're going to confirm our sketch. Now we're going to hit our extrude tool. And we have to actually extrude everything. If I just extrude this outer perimeter, I'm going to have holes in the bowl. And that's not necessarily what I want to do. right? So I'm going to click on the entire base of the bowl sketch. And I'm actually going to click on my interior cutouts. So I'm extruding the solid paw print here. And I'm going to extrude to a depth of, say, 3 inches. Eh, let's do 2.5, like so. Hit your checkbox. Now we're actually going to copy those cutouts we had from this base of bowl sketch. So I want to actually hover over. Base of bowl is now grayed out. So I'm going to hit this little eyeball to show the base of bowl so I can actually see the cutouts that we made. And we're going to copy them to the top of the bowl. So let's click on the top of our bowl so it's highlighted in yellow. Let's make a new sketch and let's call this pockets of bowl. I'm going to change to my top view. And because I hit this little eyeball next to the base of bowl sketch, I can see those pockets as dotted construction lines. I'm going to copy the use project or convert button. That's this cube right here. It's the letter U on your keyboard, use. And I'm going to click on all the little pocket cutouts that I have. And again, for this bottom one, because we drew it in multiple parts, you're going to have to click on it in multiple parts. Hit your checkbox. I'm actually going to hide the base of bowl sketch again. We don't need that anymore. When I go back to my isometric view, I can see that I've copied those cutouts to the top of the bowl. I'm going to grab my extrude tool. We're going to set this to remove 2.25 as long as you've extruded to two and a half like I did. And we're gonna change this to remove. And I'm gonna click on my five cutouts and then hit my checkbox. And we essentially have our bowl. Now to make this look a little bit more statically pleasing, and I'm just gonna hide these work planes here so you can see a little bit. So just to add some finishing touches here, we're gonna grab our fillet tool. And I'm just going to round over the top of my bowl. So if I click right here, I'm trying to round this over. And if you get red like this that appears, it's because you're trying to actually round over too much uh, for where your bowl actually meets and intersects. So right now, on shape, on shape is telling me that these corners are colliding and I can't actually fit around for what I'm trying to do. So if that's the case, you can actually manually click on individual parts of your bowl. So for example, I'm just going to round over these interior pockets of my bowl, like so. If I wanted to, I could even round over, say, the inside where that all met. And I'm thinking that looks pretty close to the image that we actually saw.